Hello, and happy Stratter Day, friends. Cyberry here, with another Darkest Dungeon How to Use guide. Before I get started, uh, thanks for tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and share this guide with a friend. Alright, uh, let's get down to business. I almost, I almost broke it, man. I almost broke it. Today we're going to take a deep dive into how to play the Viper. The Viper was released February 26th of this year, 2021. Um, it was last updated on March 16th of 2021. Let's go through the credits real quick and then get right to the base stats. Um, Zero System did all the art assets and the early and late concepting. Tilted Hat also did early and late concepting for this class. 54 NBB did all the animations, and Retail did all the sounds. Cat did all the barks and the dialogue, and Retrograded provided funding for the sounds and balance suggestions. The HP at first resolve is 24. It will progress to a 44 at max resolve. This is um, comparable to a Vestal and a Highwayman. This is what I consider average HP, but it's a little on the the high end of average, if you'll think about it like that, because it's not much lower than uh, the Hellion's base HP, for example, and I don't really consider her average, just barely. Um, the dodge starts at a 5 and progresses to a 25. This is um, a rather normal progression. This is average also, in my opinion. It's the same as um, Crusader or Bounty Hunter. The prot is zero, um, as all classes seem to have. Not really a plus or a minus. The speed is high. Um, it starts at a six and progresses to a seven at third resolve and an eight at fifth resolve. This is the same progression as an occultist, and it is a high stat. This is actually faster um, at well, at the beginning of the game, it's faster than a shield breaker, but slightly slower than a shield breaker at final resolve. The accuracy is a plus zero, like like usual. The crit modifier is a three percent and progresses to a seven percent at final resolve. Um, this is average as well. Uh, it's crusader-like stats. Now the damage is an interesting one. Um, it starts at 6 to 10 at base resolve and progresses to a 10 to a 16 at final resolve. Um, this one was kind of hard for me to classify just a little bit, um, and that's because it's basically the Highwayman's damage stats, but you add one to the minimum damage at each level. So a Highwayman would have 5 to 10 at first level, this wouldn't get 6 to 10. And at same at the end, Highwayman would normally have 9 to 16 at final level, and the Viper gets 10 to 16. So yeah, I consider it good damage, and it's it, it might even be uh, close to what I would consider top-end damage, depending on how you outfit her with trinkets and or how you are using her skills. Speaking of skills, let's just dive straight into her combat skills. Um, her first skill is Tongue Pull. It is usable from the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th rank, and you can target the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th rank of the opponent. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 90, and a damage modifier of negative 90%, and it pulls the target 3 squares with a 110% base. So this is a um, pretty potent pull. Especially at opening resolve, normally they'll start with a uh, base of 100%. So this is um, actually pretty pretty chonky, if that makes sense. Um, it's not going to do a ton of damage, but you can literally pull anyone to the front rank and have the rest of your party just pummel them if they need someone to be pulled into range. Her second ability is Venom Mist, and it is usable from the 2nd, 3rd, or 4th rank, and you may target any opponent. It's a ranged attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 80%, and a crit modifier of 2. And it will hit the target with a blight at 90% base, which is a little lower than normal, um, for 3 points a round for 3 rounds, 
and all the other targets are going to have a chance to be blighted at a 60% base with one point over a round for three rounds. Um, so if you have a trinket increasing her blight chance on her, this has a good chance of blighting the initial target and a decent chance of blighting all the secondary targets. So this is kind of a uh, fun skill. Not a lot of things that I've seen have this ability to um, blight other targets from the original attacked foe. Her third ability is Bind. Um, it is usable from rank 1 or 2, and is usable to target rank 1 or 2 on the opposing side. It's a melee attack with an accuracy base of 85, a damage modifier of negative 60%, and a crit modifier of plus 6. And this will stun the target with a 100% base. This is a um, normally potent stun. The range leaves a little to be desired, but the stun is actually um, rather balanced when you factor in that and the rest of her kit. Her fourth ability is Sweeping Slash. It is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and usable to target rank 1 or 2 on the opposing side. It's a melee attack. This will move her back one space, and it has an accuracy base of 90, a damage modifier of negative 15%, and a crit mod of plus 3%. This will inflict a bleed with a 100% base of two points around for three rounds. So if you need to do a decent chunk of damage to somebody, and it would be nice to inflict a bleed as well, this is probably the attack for you. Just keep in mind, um, this will move her back a rank um, and if that's going to cause problems in your team, if it's not like a shuffle team, just make sure whoever's behind her can function just fine from the rank she's in, and this won't cause you any problems. Her fifth ability is Slithering Stab. It is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and usable to target enemy ranks 1, 2, or 3. It's a melee attack that moves her forward one rank. So it's an accuracy base of 85, it does full damage, and has a crit modifier of plus 4%. This also bypasses guard. Um, this is a good way to put her back in the position you wanted her in if you had to use Sweeping Slash. This is a decent combo. Um, I find that I don't often use them in combination much anymore, just because I'm still experimenting with the rest of her kit. There's a lot of... Um, weird things she can do and weird ways you can utilize her and I'm probably gonna experiment with something I haven't done yet when I uh, get to the gameplay section of this video. But overall, um, doing 100% damage and bypassing guard, uh, th that's pretty potent. Uh, I think that's um, it's right up there with shield breaker as far as bypassing guard, in my opinion. Her sixth ability is called Wide Shot. It is usable from rank 1, 2, or 3, and you may target any opponent rank with this shot. This is only usable three times per battle, so if you're bringing this into endless mode, be wary or have in mind the trinket I will show you later in the video. Um, so it's a ranged attack. It has an accuracy base of 95. It does full damage, kind of, um, and has a crit modifier of 2%. Now, the damage mod actually is going to change based on what position you are targeting on the other side. Uh, if you're targeting the front row, you're going to do an extra 10% damage. If you are targeting the second row, you're going to do straight, normal, full damage, 100%. Um, but if you're targeting the back ranks, rank 3 will take only 80% of that damage at a negative 20 there, and you will do negative 30 damage to the back rank for a total of 70% of base value. This is a pretty good attack because it is so uh, functional. There are so many different um, ranks you can hit this for, with that you're going to do potent damage to basically anyone on the field. Just keep in mind it, it's better off for her to target the front ranks with this. And her final combat skill is Slugshot. It is usable from rank 2 or 3 and usable to target rank 1 or 2 in the opposing side. This is only usable once per battle. It is a ranged attack. I believe actually this progresses to a higher... 
yeah, it's usable twice per battle um, at mid-level. It might go up even more than that. I'm not sure. But um, it has an accuracy base of 80, a damage modifier of plus 35%, and a crit modifier of plus 1. This is a good way to just one-shot somebody in the front, assuming they don't have, like, prot, or potentially you have ways to bypass that. Uh, she has at least one way to bypass that that I'm aware of. So let's real quick go over her unique camping skills. Um, she's got the normal Encourage Wound Care pep talk. Um, her first unique camping skill is Shed Scales. It's a time cost 3 ability, um, and it will give her buffs for 3 speed for the next 4 battles, 10 dodge for the next 4 battles, and those are both really good for her. Um, the other thing it does is it has a 50% chance to produce one Aegis block item um, from the Shield Breakers, you know, DLC, more or less. Uh, this is why in the mod store it recommends you have the Shield Breaker. Keep that in mind, play accordingly, but I highly suggest you have the Shield Breaker in your thing anyway. It's just a good class. Her second unique camping skill is Entranced Sway. It is a time cost 4 ability, and when you choose this, you will choose one companion. What it does is it's going to stress heal you, the Viper, for 30 stress, and it's going to stress heal that companion for 20 stress. But the other people in your party, if they are religious, they're going to take 15 stress damage. If they're not religious, there's a 50% chance they will still take 10 stress damage anyway. So this is a kind of unique and uh, peculiar camping skill, but it's very, very useful for stress re reduction, uh, especially if you have, you know, let's say you have a party with a couple people who are taking most of the, most of the damage, maybe one person stealths, or maybe one person forces a guard. Um, if you've got two people that are really stressed out, this is a real good way to kind of chop into that stress damage a little bit. And it only costs you the four time cost, so. Her third unique camping skill is Toxin Concoction. It is a time cost three ability, and it will buff herself for plus 50% blight skill duration for four battles. If you think you're going to be um, in it for the long haul in the next couple battles, let's say you're going in against the boss, and you want to make sure that blight lasts as long as possible, this isn't so bad. Um, if you need that blight duration to go up, that is, um, this is a good consideration. I don't find I've used this um, ever before, so yeah, I don't know. I, I find more use out of the blight amount or the blight skill chance, but duration is a fun way to shake that up. And her final camping skill is thermal detection. Time cost 4 ability, um, and what it's going to do is it's going to uh, buff herself for the next 4 battles. The first buff is just a 10% scouting chance for the next 4 battles, so that'll help you when you're running around between the rooms to hopefully find hidden stuff. Uh, the other buffs are actual battle related buffs. You're going to add 10% to your crit for the next 4 battles, and allow you to ignore stealth for the next 4 battles. If you don't have a good way to ignore stealth in your party, this is a um, serviceable replacement. Uh, the fact that it's only four battles at a time can be a problem, but I often find that um, it's just a minor inconvenience if you run out of that timer, let's say, and then a stealth enemy comes. You just have to wait for them to unstealth, is all. So, um, let's go over her crit effect. I lightly mentioned it before, um, it is a way to ignore prot uh, on targets. Um, if she gets a crit, she will ignore 25% of protection rating with her attacks for the next few rounds. Um, so it's a good way for her to kind of carve into those high prot enemies, just assuming she gets the crits in the first place. Um, what other unique traits does she have? She has a custom move skill. In combat, her move icon is not a move icon, it is a sway icon. Um, and what it does is you, s you select it, it is a free action ability. And you can use it in a couple of 
tactical ways. Um, what it does, we'll go into real quick, um, is it's going to, you click on it, it's a free action, so you get to use it, and then you use your ability for the turn, and that is it. What it will do is it's going to hit you with a shuffle status affliction, so that next turn you're going to randomly shuffle to another position before you start your turn. Um, and what it also does is it's going to give you position dependent buffs based on where you are. If you are in position 1, it's going to add 25% to your stun skill chance. If you're in position 2, it's going to add 10% to your crit. If you're in position 3, it's going to give you a, uh, a buff for negative 20% damage received. And this one will not just last the one round, it'll last the entirety of your round and the entirety of the turn until your next round. So it's actually going to reduce damage on her considerably rather than just the five seconds it would have been. Um, and uh, position four, if you are in the, that position, it will add 30% to your blight skill chance for that round. So if you want to move to a different position, if you're not in the position you want to be, or if you just want to empower something and you don't care what position you end up in, this is a good way to do that. You just choose the free action uh, sway icon and then choose your attack. I will probably be utilizing this in the combat section later uh, because I have a build that would benefit from it, I assume. What this also means is that this means she will not be able to uh, move herself through combat through other means other than these two abilities I think that's the only two. Yeah, these two abilities, or by moving the other partners to force her into a position. So she's got a weird degree of control of what position she's going to be in in that way, uh, but she's not going to be as fine-tuned as to be able to um, necessarily choose what position she'd rather be in. Um, what kind of quirks would I think of with her? Um, I still have not really settled into whether ranged or melee is better for my playstyle. Um, she technically has more ranged abilities. Um, I find I gravitate toward her melee abilities a little bit more often um, because of the utility uh, a few of them have. So um, it's really hard to decide. I think the smartest thing to do would be to pick whether you're going to go out with her in low light and then choose Lurker or whether you're going to go out with her in the normal high torch light and choose Warrior of Light instead. Uh, this one happened to have Slugger. I haven't locked it because I'm unsure that is the way I'm going to go. Um, another thing you might want to do is um, make it so that she gets a lot more crits. Um, that might be good. Uh, Deadly might not be a bad thing to lock. It also might not be a bad idea to um, see if you can get prismatic precision to land on her. She is um, highly functional and that plus four crit on either ranged or melee would be um, really helpful for her. Let's go, uh, before we get into the combat section, I have a lot of her trinkets. I think it, I'm the only ones I'm missing are her, uh, her CC set. Okay, where is your list? There you are. Her first trinket is the um, the crystalline trinket. Shard infused tattoo. It is going to give you plus 20% blight amount. It is going to reduce your blight resistance by 30%. It is also going to raise the blight amount received on yourself. And if you have anti-venom in your inventory, it's going to add 10 to your accuracy. And if you have bandage in your inventory, it will add 10% to your max HP. So uh, I find I will get a hell of a lot of use out of that accuracy and that max HP. Um, so if you want a, a sturdier and more accurate version of the Viper, this might not be a bad way to do so. Um, the minus 30 blight resistance, it could be a problem. But probably won't bug you that much if you plan your team accordingly. Uh, but that blight amount received and the blight amount given, um, that is an interesting trade-off. Um, the first of her rare, or very rare, excuse me, trinkets is the Black Powder Flask. 
Um, it's going to add 20% to her ranged damage skills. And on a ranged attack hit, it will debuff your ranged accuracy. I believe these debuffs last three rounds. Um, I could be mistaken. And on a monster kill, it will refresh your limited use skills. So um, both those, both these gun skills here were limited use. So this is a good way to like um, get a lot of utility and use out of those, especially if you're going into endless mode. This is this is a thing you should probably bring if you plan on using either of these at all, um, because having only three shots or one shot uh, can be a problem. Her second very rare trinket is the corrosive blade. Uh, it's gonna it's gonna debuff your damage with melee skills by 15%. It is going to remove 50% of your stun skill chance with melee skills. But on every melee attack, you are going to blight with a really high base, so it'll probably blight uh, one point around for eight rounds. So it's very slow blight, but it's a good way to set blight if you have a party that is dependent on hitting blighted opponents. For example, uh, Lamia comes to mind, Grave Robber comes to mind, that kind of thing. This is not a bad way to do it. And it'll also, on melee attack hit, debuff the target for a minus 20% prot. Her uh, rare trinket is Soothing Saki. Um, this one is actually really really interesting and really good with her, uh, what was it called again? Entranced Sway camping skill. Um, what it does is gonna add 50% to your stress relief skills while camping, and it's going to um, give her a minus 15% stress buff on her, and on attack crits she will stress heal all heroes for minus 7 stress, and on an attack crit she will debuff the party minus seven accuracy so it's kind of a trade-off of uh, when she crits she's going to buff and debuff by stress healing folks um, and that plus 50 percent stress relief skills while camping is going to turn this into a monstrously good stress heal for two targets um, because 50 percent is going to turn that minus 20 to a minus 30 and a minus 30 into a minus 45 so it's going to be really functional at that point. Um, her uncommon trinket is Spine Plating. It is very functional because it's going to give her that prot um, survivability of 15% prot. And it's also going to give her a minus 10 to crits received chance. Only at the cost of minus 2 speed. So if you want a uh, slightly tankier version, one who's not going to get critted and thus very close to one-shotted because of that, um, this is not a bad choice. And her common trinket is a plus 8% crit, plus 5 accuracy versus beast, and minus 3 speed versus humans. The snake eye is uh, pretty functional for an early game trinket. That 8% crit almost makes me want to use it more often than I, uh, than I currently do. Alright, so I have a different one, a level 3 one that I'm going to use, so I don't need to put those skills on just yet. Um, I am going to jump into a medium level quest and see how this party does. Uh, let's just bring most of the shit. I don't need these. But I'm currently using on her um, Ashra's head from the Buried. Hey, that's my class. Um, and I'm using the Rotting Trophy Ringmaster Trinket. And my hope here is that her in the final uh, rank and utilizing her Sway ability to give me a fourth position boost to her Blight skill chance, I'm going to use this to Blight a motherfucker. And hopefully it will work in the way I hope that it's going to also Blight everyone else and it's going to increase my blights by two points around for three rounds. So hopefully this is going to work out exactly how I intend. We'll see though. I don't know how they actually interact. Corruption has soaked the soil, sapping all good life from these groves. Let us burn out this evil. 
Let us burn out this evil. Alright, um, who's my looter? I don't really... This party is a little risky. I might not even finish this quest afterwards. Because I don't have a healer. Um, I also don't have a stress healer. So it's really... I would not put these people together myself if I were you. Um, I would replace the tactician, if anything, um, with a healer that can work from the front ranks or the bad ranks is what I would do. In Radiance, may we find victory. Alright. But I'm hoping I can just shut down opponents to a degree that it won't matter. Uh, who do I want to give two turns to? You know what? Let's make it you. We're going to hit him with this. Get the blight bonus. And we're going to hit... Well, I can't hit her, so you... Oh, no! Oh, that's the worst. That's just the worst. And now I have minus... Oh, Bullshit. Yikes. Slowly. Maybe next battle it'll work out. I can't believe I missed round one. That's funny shit, though. I don't normally use the Yop with the Hellion. Destroyed. Poor dog. Wish I could hit you. I don't have a way to hit stealth enemies right now. Let's just, um... Unfortunately, I gotta pass. Do you have a way to get rid of stealth? I know you can mark folks, but I don't think you can get rid of stealth. Nah, you maneuver people though. Um, get behind me! A brilliant confluence of skill and purpose. Yay, unstealthed. Well, that's unfortunate. You're in the back again, though. Well, lame. Let's see what happens. Decisive the four crit, that's fun. A blight for six over five rounds. I didn't get to see if the other targets took a bigger blight or not. But a six blight is actually going to be considerable. Um, just because of that, though. Interesting. Aha! Oh, okay. It's fine. Wow, this party does not function. <laughs> I really would not. I would not suggest it. If you put them in the right order and they act accordingly on round one, it's not that bad. But they don't function. <laughs> Okay, head to the back. Well, I want to give you another ability here, because that's the one we're showing off. Alright, let's go this way. What is this minus speed? Okay, okay. Six, two, two, two. All right, not terrible, not terrible. And that guy's dead and he just doesn't know it. Oh, he's not quite dead. Well, that's unfortunate. Hmm. So the good news is it looks like um, because these non-targets are targeted by some part of this ability, that 90% blight, um, blight base there, plus this, is not high enough to hit every time, but because they're being targeted, this will hit, and it has a higher base. So you can actually kind of cheat the system with Ashra's head and this attack to more reliably land a small blight of two on all the other targets. 
while you're pinpointing somebody, you know? So uh, it's, it's actually kind of functional. It's a, uh, it's a little bit better than the Shield Breakers Impale that way. It just won't be doing straight damage to everybody as well. Resisted the blade. Yikers. Press this advantage. And you're dead, sir. No quarter. Alright. This expedition at least promises success. Is there a different way I wanna utilize her to show her off? Uh what were her sway buffs again? Ten percent crit in position two. So I'm gonna I'm gonna move her to there. It does work like move outside of battle, which is nice. Let's see here. You're gonna grab the things. Let's go get in position battle three. Oh. Well, that's nice. We haven't taken any stress damage yet, which is not bad. Alright. Battle three, here we go. I didn't think about that. I should have just hacked at it. Son of a bitch. Oh, I can though. We can send you forward. Uh. Eh? That's the one. Okay. Oh, all right. It's just weird looking at that. Eradicated. So I should have a really high crit now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and hit this. Oh, I didn't use the sway though. I'm an idiot. I'm an idiot. Just don't do what I'm doing. I'm a noob with the viper is what's happening. Good news is she's still in rank two. So as long as I don't move the grave robber, it's gonna stay that way. Obliterated. I'm leaving this one for her to hopefully crit. Position two. Give me that crit buff, yo. Give me that crit buff, yo. I didn't get the crit. But it was delicious. Ooh. Lots of blighties. Ooh. Well, it's dead next round. I don't know if this brings a guy. It does not. Well, he's dead. Monsters That's all she wrote. Has no intrinsic merit. Good Unless work. Inordinate exsanguination be Good work, everyone. Alright, that is all the time I really have today. Um, thanks for watching. Uh, we're going to have a Let's Play video coming up on Wednesday. And uh, tune in next Stratter Day for another class guide. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to choose yet, but it's going to be one that is semi-recent. So I can get done with the the recent classes and start diving into the huge catalog of <sighs> backlogged character classes. So, um, thanks for watching. Stay frosty.